Hey guys, I'm Walt, Amateur Call Sign K4OGO. I had a thing that happened to me this past week and uh, it got me thinking. Um, what I did was I put up a sloping NFED half wave and, and, and got on the air and I'm here in Poland and what I was trying to do, I was going to do a live stream on my channel and, and talk to guys, especially in the UK. I, I usually get over into the UK really easy and, and make some great contacts. Um, I kind of positioned this thing it, it probably in a, it, it was actually in a different uh, position than what I normally do. But uh, I was, it was horrible. I was getting four threes and then people uh, that were letting me know, I can't even hear you. So I, I took it down real quick. I ended the stream, took it down real quick and immediately like right away, I, I put a vertical up. Uh, it's the uh, Ribikoff vertical that I built. I put it up in the backyard, fired up the radio and the same area, same people. I was getting five, nine plus five over. I was just getting some amazing signal reports. I don't think this was really proving that the antenna, the vertical antenna was better than the horizontal antenna. I think it was the situation I was in. And I get a lot of questions from guys that are just new generals and they want to start operating portable. And they talk about antennas. What should I do? Should I use an infat half wave? Should I build a vertical? I think it's all dependent on your location, situation, and what you're really looking for. I want to go over some of the antennas I've built and, uh, and experimented with, and I've built a lot of antennas, both horizontal and vertical type antennas. I want to go over them, and then at the end of this video, kind of go over um, some pros and cons and my thoughts on, and, and, and experiences and, and what I think you should use when it comes to antennas. Stick around. preface this by saying that I'm not saying that one either a vertical is better than a horizontal or a horizontal is better than a vertical. It really, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it just depends on your situation and, and, and what's going on and what you, what you want it for. I want to go over a few antennas that I built. Uh, these are the basics. If you're going to start out portable in HF and you're just getting going, and let's start with horizontal antennas. The number one horizontal antenna, the easiest to build, uh, the basic, basically the granddaddy of them all, is the basic dipole. The dipole is simple. It's, it's a half wavelength long, um, fed in the middle. Uh, usually with, um, you can use a clip or a one-to-one -one ballon if you want to use a ballon to choke out the noise. Um, a dipole, simple dipole, really easy to build. Um, one thing about the dipole and with most horizontal antennas is them, for them to be effective, you have to get them up off the ground. And, and that can somewhat be a little bit of an issue uh, when it comes to, um, to horizontal antennas. Um, the other one is the, uh, the, one of the very most popular antennas right now for horizontals is the NFED half wave. NFED half wave is a wonderful antenna. I've built quite a few of them. Um, basically for 40 through 10 meters, it's a, approximately a 66 foot long uh, piece of wire or, or 20 meter long wire, which is a half a wavelength for 40 meters. Um, fed at the end with a 49 to 1 un, -un to uh, have an impedance match. Um, I put these up as slopers, horizontal, uh, sloping up, sloping down, and I've had some pretty good success with the uh, NFED half wave. But um, yeah, that's, it's, it's a real popular antenna. And if you're just getting started, it's not a bad antenna to start out portable with, uh, con considering where you're uh, at and your, um, yeah, your location and how hard or how easy it would be to get the end of that antenna up a tree, up a pole, or what have you. Another um, one is uh, very similar to NFED dipole is the random wire antenna. I really do like the random wire antenna. And when you say random wire, it's really not random. You're trying to find a length of wire that's not resonant on any, any uh, frequency or its multiples of that frequency. And that way the impedance match can be made pretty close with about a nine to one on un And with that, usually with this antenna, you do need an ATU, automatic tuner, uh, either in your rig or an external tuner where you can tune this antenna. But th they perform well and a, a lot of the same characteristics as far as uh, uh, radiation pattern and what have you as the NFED half wave. And like the NFED half wave, it is a multi-band antenna. Whereas the dipole that I first mentioned is a mono-band antenna um, for sure. Another multi-band antenna that's a very a wonderful performer is the off-center fed dipole. The off-center fed dipole is multi-band. What you usually do or what the way these are built is it's a half wavelength long, but it's fed at two-thirds. So it, one, 
One part of the antenna is two thirds of the antenna length long and the other is one third long. So basically the overall length is two thirds and then split it at the one third part. Uh, great antenna. Um, some people call these Wyndham's. I've seen them, Carolina Wyndham's, whatever. There, there's a lot of different names. I call it the off-center fed dipole. I've, I have built or, or put a couple of these up um, and, and great multi-band antennas for use. And then there's more and more. I mean, we could go on. There's the um, G5RV. I put one of those up. We're kind of getting a little bit more into uh, uh, out of the range of portables here, though, when you start talking about a G5RV or, you know, something a little bit more would be a permanent back garden or backyard antennas. I'm trying to just stick with portables. So horizontal antennas, if you're thinking about going off out with a portable with a horizontal, they're great, man. If you could throw it up a tree or on a pole, you got the dipole. If you want to be a monobander, you've got the infed half wave, you got random wire, off center fed dipole. They're great for portable. Good, good antennas, good portable antennas. Let's move over to the vertical antenna now. The, probably the, uh, the match to the dipole as a monobander is a quarter wave ground plane antenna. And you can build these monoband for different bands. Um, I have had some great success and have really enjoyed building these for 20 meters. I've built quite a few for 20 meters. I've built them for 20, 15, uh, 10. I actually had a video out if you go look for it, Dirt Cheap DX is because I build mine with just a inexpensive pole. A, uh, a speaker wire, just 16 gauge speaker wire, and, and, and put them up. Now these require a ground plane, and a lot of time, a lot of questions I ask get asked is, how long do you cut the wires for a ground plane? You know, there's a lot of debate on that. They do not have to be resonant if, if they're laying on the ground. Basically, what I usually cut mine around five meters or so because it's a good length, and try to get down as many as you can. I know there's a point to where you're, 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 there's too many, you don't need to do it. But, but for portable ops, if you're putting up a portable antenna for ease and to get it up and to get it and then to pick it back up when you're done, real easy. Four to six is normally what I go with with um, with counterpoise wires on the ground for a, a vertical dipole. And, and what people, a lot of people don't understand is what you're doing is uh, think of a mirror over top of a candle. You're mirroring the other image of the candle. You're seeing the light both ways. Or for that matter, just that the vertical antenna up, the ground is the other half of that antenna. So it's a mirror. And you're, the, the better the mirror is on the ground, the better the antenna, because the ground is the other half of an antenna with a vertical, uh, at least a vertical that's used in a ground plane for sure. Um, another antenna, and I've built a few of these, is, is a halfway vertical. You can build a halfway vertical. There's some out there you can buy. I know M1 ECC builds a good 20 meter uh, Half, halfway vertical um, and he has a matching box and I put that up uh, you, to do this you really need a good pole I have a, a 10 meter DX commander pole these are not that expensive if you want to get out and build some big tall verticals that's a great uh, great tool to have um, you can also I've built them also with uh, with a 49 to 1 as well not a perfect match but uh, they work with the ATU and they get out well uh, they do well a lot of times I, I um, I, I, I just do that and let the uh, let the ATU in the uh, in the radio do the work as far as matching. Uh, Forty nine to one is close enough for a, a, a twenty meter vertical, or a, which is actually ten meters long on, on that. Um, I, antenna I really love, which is really just a random wire antenna, is the Ribikoff antenna, and it's built almost exactly like the. Uh, like the quarter wave ground plate is, it just has a random length at the top. The one I build um, is 7.6 meters high, which is about 25 feet. And it's a multi-band antenna for a vertical. And you do need an ATU, but boy, it kicks butt. It is an amazing antenna. I've done a couple videos on it and uh, probably had some of my best DX with that antenna. And that, it, that antenna is really what made me uh, do this video to show that, uh, yeah, uh, verticals sometimes you you need them, and that is basically to uh, they will outperform somewhat a, a horizontal if you're trying to reach DX or in a certain direction. So that's uh, one antenna. Uh, another really great vertical antenna, small, compact, easy to travel with, is a hamstick. Man, you could put a hamstick in the backseat of the car and go out in the parks, do poto or whatever, just stick it on a on a ground rod or, or or for that matter, a mag mount on top of the car if you wanted to. And ham sticks are great. They're mono band, but they're great verticals. And in the right situation, it's a great antenna to go portable with. 
Um, I, I did a video recently on, on my top 10, my favorite antennas, and it's for verticals for pure portable. I don't say it's the best performer. It's just the easiest to get vertical with. It's a coil. I love coils. I have two of them. I have my uh, Slidewinder DX coil, and I have a Wolf River coil. Both of these are really great because you can put a telescopic whip, a folding military whip, different things on it, stick it on either mag mount of the car again or on a ground rod with some uh, counterpoise, and you can really get out with them. They're, they're great antennas and uh, great, a great way that, to adjust and have a multi-band antenna when you're working portable. They, they, they're, they're amazing. They really are. So that's it. That's just horizontal and verticals. I know some people are going to go, well, what about the delta loop and what about a mag loop and what about uh, phase arrays and whatever? And we're getting a little... Oh, that's a little bit more advanced than I want to do. I just want to do single wire antennas is what I want to talk about. Now I want to get some pros and cons to, to both of them. Um, we'll start uh, with the horizontals. Uh, the, the, the pros, I guess, and this may be a pro and a con, um, the pros is if you're trying to work nearby, I mean, if you're familiar with NVIS or, or near vertical antenna uh, for, for, for its radiation pattern, they, they radiate upwards and not as far on a low uh, DX line uh, for a takeoff angle. And this is good in some cases, like here in Europe, I, I'm here operating Poland. I've sat here in Poland with a horizontal antenna and I can get the Czech Republic and Slovakia, Slovenia, you know, places that I would skip right over with a vertical antenna. So a horizontal antenna for, for if you want to, in a range, say, you know, two, three, four, five, six hundred miles around you, Amazing antenna. So let's just say you're working POTA and you're trying to get states, you know, in the United States, you know, three, two, three, four states around you, depending, states are a big country, but some states are smaller than the others. But you know what I'm saying? If you're trying to get someone in a, a range around you, that, that is a pro for a horizontal. Also at con, if you're trying to work DX, the and one thing you need to do with a horizontal, I mentioned it earlier, is you got to get it up off the ground, about a half of a wavelength off the ground. So let's just say that infet half wave or a, a 40 meter dipole, you got to get that thing up in the air, flat topping at about 66 feet in the air. I don't know about you, but I don't have 66 foot poles to put it up on. And some people may have uh, trees that tall and that they could get it up on. But wow, I mean, how hard would that be? So that, is a, that to me is a con of, of the uh, horizontal antennas. One thing I do, comparing a horizontal to a vertical though, they're quieter antennas. And when you put up a vertical, because of the takeoff angle of a vertical, and vertical antennas are noisy, they really are. And they kind of, uh, that can be your noise, noise level, your noise floor when you're operating with a vertical is gonna be a little higher, especially when you get in, down in the lower bands, is it, it can get that way. But um, if you're just out for the day and you're trying to make DX context, I can work through that usually and, and do that. Um, vertical is all about the takeoff angle. I know some people say, yeah, vertical antenna is equally bad in all directions. Yeah, maybe so, but it's also equally good in all directions if you're trying to do it. And that was a premise of, of what I did the other day when I took down the, um, the, or the, the infed and put up the vertical antennas because now I was radiating you know equally as well all the way over to the UK where I was trying to make contacts and, uh, and for that matter it, it worked also uh, one thing I did notice uh, comparing I, I've been operating here off and on over in Poland for a year is I look back through my logbook and notice that almost every contact that I had back to the United States across the Atlantic were done with vertical antennas. They really were. Some of them were just playing around antennas that I was goofing around with. I did a horizontal uh, wound, a hand, an antenna horizontally around a pole. Uh, it was basically a random wire around a pole and, uh, and I talked over to the States with that. Um, also, uh, my contacts to Australia, Long Path to Australia, every one of them that I've done from here, I've done a few, they were all done with vertical antennas. One of them with a vertical antenna I built out of tape measures. And so, um, yeah, that, that shows you that the low takeoff angle and for pure DX, that's really what worked for me. Now, uh, granted, I, I do believe the ground, I'm not on the ocean. I usually operate uh, right next to the ocean and it's all about the ground when it comes to vertical antennas. 
And, uh, and I'm blessed that I live near the ocean in the States because that ground, the salt water in the ground is just amazing. And I do some wonderful things with vertical antennas there. But I noticed, I think the soil here where I'm at in Poland is pretty good as well. And that's why I made those um, really good contacts um, with the verticals from here over to the States across the Atlantic and the long path I've done over to, uh, to Australia where all with verticals because... Uh, the, 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 the counterpoise wires I put down over, probably some really good soil for that to work that way. Anyway, um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not saying one's better than the other. I just get a lot of questions and it kind of, kind of pertains to this topic. A lot of times I'll put up, you know, a vertical and then there's always that guy that comes in, no, you should put up this, you know, an infed half wave. Or I'll put up an infed half wave and somebody will say, no, you should put up a vertical. Look, it's... As long as you've got an antenna in the air, that's really what it's all about. Anything you can possibly get up and start making contacts with is a good antenna for sure. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, every one of these antennas, as well as some others, a lot of other antennas, they're here on my channel. So if you're interested in, um, in, in experimenting with antennas, is what I do mostly. I do have other things that I do, but uh, I, I love experimenting with antennas. If you want to see some of my experiments, go back and look. Uh, subscribe to the channel. And go back and look at some of my videos because um, you'll see me learning. I'm not an expert. I, I'm, I'm learning as well, but I like to document it. And here you go. And this video itself, I just kind of, it's kind of a going back over some of the things I've learned and, and some of the things I've documented. And hopefully it will help you, especially guys that are just moving up in the United States from the, uh, from the tech class to the general because you want to work HF. Now is the time to do that. We are on the upswing of Solar Cycle 25. Things are only going to get better for the next few years. It's going to be great. And now is a wonderful time to get out and build an HF portable antenna. Anyway, I've rambled on enough. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And until next time, I'm Walt, K4OGO73, my friends.